Good morning, sisters and brothers, and um, welcome to our morning prayer. Today is Thursday, the 6th of uh, May, and we give God thanks for another day that he has given us, and we come to, to entrust this new day to him and, um, and to ask for his guidance and his protection, and to meditate on his word afresh today. Let's, let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for today. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live, in, live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our psalm for this morning, our psalm for today, is Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions, 
I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Amen. Amen. So this psalm, it starts with a, a you see the progression of the psalm. It starts with asking God for mercy recognizing enemies people who are go who are seeking to harm the 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 psalmist probably david is surrounded by 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 beasts wild beasts those lions he's in the midst of lions he says um these are people who are seeking to harm him but then he has he has a time of praise my heart, O oh God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. I get the feeling that in the midst of the lion's den, David is praising God. In the midst, surrounded by people who are trying to kill him, he's praising God. That's, what, that's a feeling I get from the psalm. I don't, I don't get the sense that he's been delivered. They spread a net for my feet. They dug a pit, but they have fallen into it themselves. And now my heart is steadfast. Uh, and that sense of, of trust in God, no matter who is trying to kill me, no matter who all my enemies are, I am trusting in God. Uh, Keller's comments here, how do we handle times of great danger? When we are surrounded by predatory forces, David continues to sing praise to God's glory right in the deep darkness with a fierce, joyful buoyancy. He sees God's greatness in the skies and the heavens. There's light and high beauty forever beyond the reach of any evil shadows in this world. This is not mere stoic defiance. I won't let it get me down but it is theological hope. This uni the universe is an endless ocean of God's joy and glory. We are caught temporarily in a little drop of sadness here on earth, but eventually it will be removed. Regardless of what happens immediately to us, eventually it will be all right. It will be all right. Like, this, like the writer said, it is well with my soul, no matter what happens temporarily in this life to our sisters and brothers. When we have this steadfast faith, it is well. And the prayer, Lord, help me to gain perspective. Someday your glory will rise as the ultimate dawn to end all nightmares and darkness. I will be resurrected and I will live with you in the unimaginable pleasures of infinite love. Lift up the eyes of my heart to see this horizon right now in the midst of the darkness. Amen. Amen. Mm. In our New Testament uh, reading, 
our New Testament reading is First Peter, First Peter, chapter two, from verse eleven, verse one. So no, verse eleven. First Peter, chapter two, verse eleven to the end. First Peter, chapter two, verse eleven to the end. Verse 11 to the end. First Peter chapter 2. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor or as the supreme authority, or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters. Not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed for you were, for you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Okay. It's a lot here. Um, I, I, I just want to, of course, try to pick out a few things that we can hold on to today. Please note that just like Paul in his in his letters, Peter uh, gives us a theological basis for our for, for for our behavior. The first the first chapter and the first part of chapter two of the theological grounding for who we are. Uh, in fact, even verse 11 here, which I'm going to look at in a moment, uh, all of that is the, is the theological underpinning. And then he says, this is how we are to behave. This is who we are. This is how we are to act. And so he, he begins by saying, that, by, by saying we are to submit ourselves to the human authority um, and so Peter's, Peter, Peter first says, um, you know, human authority, as Paul says in Romans 13, is God's, uh, is, 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 is God's decision, is God's uh, human authority were placed there by God. The, the institution were instituted by God, all institutions, by the way, um, that, in our society, the church, the home, the family, the government. 
um, these institutions are, are, are placed there by God uh, for purposes, for different purposes. So Paul, um, Peter here says that we are to submit to the human authority, firstly, for it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. In other words, he's saying, as Christian citizens, we are to live exemplary lives. We are to, we are to be the best model citizens. Um, not because we are citizens of this world, but because we are citizens of another world. In fact, that's the point. <laughs> the point is that because we are citizens of heaven, we are to live we are to live heavenly lives here on earth so that our neighbors will look at christians and say wow these are model citizens of this earth and they don't even belong here <laughs> they are foreigners they are strangers they are aliens in this world and yet they live such such model lives we would like to emulate those Christians. That's what Peter is saying. So for the human authority. And then he says slaves um, should, should be, be, be obedient to their masters. Now, remember, sisters and brothers, slaves and masters in the first century had nothing to do with slavery, uh, in, in the transatlantic slave trade and all of that stuff that we know about slaves. Yeah, the, 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 the best, the best, um, equivalent we could use today would be employees and employers. These are people who work for you, people who would look after you, you know, your things and so on. But in those days, of course, slaves were mistreated. Today we have employment rights and all that sort of stuff. But let's face it, sisters and brothers, before employment rights and these things, uh, employers exploited employees. And today we have tribunals and all these things. But back then they had no such thing. And so Peter is saying, in fact, he's, he's saying to the slaves, to, the, to these servants, to these employer employees, um, you know, when you are mistreated by your employer, endure it, endure it. And you know, Peter's, Peter's motivation for saying this is Jesus Christ. As in everything, Christ is our example, sisters and brothers. So he says, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you. And then he goes on to give us this final bit about how Christ himself suffered insults and threats and, 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 and entrusted himself to those who judges, um, to, to, to the one who judges justly. In other words, he never retaliated. He allowed God to deal with the judgment. Judgment is mine, says the Lord, I will... You know, I will repay vengeance is mine. So, so Peter's point is that we, Christ is to be our example in our submission to one another, but especially to our employee, our employer as employees. But lastly, and this is the bit I want to say, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. That is Peter's motivation. We are to live such lives among the pagans, even though we are not, we don't belong to this world. We are from another world, but we are to live in such a way that when they see us, they will be, they'll be amazed at the kind of life we live. Abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Foreigners, we are, we, are, we are foreigners and exiles in this world, says Peter. We need to remember this. This world is not our home. We are merely passing through. Uh, we are foreigners and exiles in this world. Not the earth. The world, the systems of the world, the, 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 the systems of the world. So we are merely passing through. And so we are to live exemplary lives. But I love this bit. Abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. And what Peter is saying, sisters and brothers, that 
we have desires in our hearts that are raging war against our spiritual lives. There are certain sinful desires that are seeking to strangle us, to strangle the life out of our souls. And we must, we must fight against it. We must fight against these desires. Uh, the, 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 the word for sinful desires is, is over-desire. That is a desire that becomes too much of a desire. And what Peter said, there are certain things that we desire in life that, that we, we desire too much. There's nothing wrong with them per se, but we desire them too much and we bring them too, too deep into our souls. And because they've come so deep to, into our souls, they are now strangling our souls. We need to remove those desires from our souls. Uh, and They may be good desires, but they become over desires. They become desires that we desire too much. And those desires are, are strangling our, the life out of our spiritual lives because they're too deep into our souls and we need to abstain from them. We need to release ourselves from them, untangle ourselves from these desires so that we can live the kind of life as God wants us to live, exemplifying, um, emulating Jesus, imitating Jesus in the world, in this world, as strangers and foreigners in this world. Amen. Let's pray. It's, I told you it was a lot. It's a, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to be foreigners and exiles in this world. This is not our home. But yet, Lord, you've commanded us to live such exemplary lives in this foreign land, in this wilderness, so that those whose homes are in this place will, will see the exemplary lives that we live in obedience to authority, in obedience to employers, imitating Christ that even when we are mistreated, we obey. And we follow Christ like a sheep to be sacrificed. And so, Lord, give us this attitude of Christ, we pray, as we, as we live as foreigners and exiles in this world, as strangers in a pagan world. Help us, O oh God, to live such exemplary lives so that the, the pagans, as Peter says, the the unbelievers, those who don't know Jesus, will be amazed at the generosity, the kindness, the, 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 the values, the ethics, the behavior of Christians. Lord, help us to exemplify Christ as we continue to live in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember we pray ourselves and our lives today as we, as we journey through this wilderness. We pray, Lord, that you'll protect us and watch over us and keep us safe from all that's evil today. Be our guide, O oh Lord, through the hours of this day. Lord, may we not fall into temptation, but lead us, lead us, O oh God, to, to, to overcome all the evils and temptations of our souls today. Those, those desires that are raging war against our souls, we pray, O oh Lord, that you'll deliver us from them. We pray for those who are sick. Remember, O oh Lord, those who are uh, those who need your spirit, your, 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 your Holy Spirit today to, to enliven them, to quicken their souls, their bodies, their minds. Those who need to be comforted by your spirit today, Lord, we pray for them. Remember those who are, who are sick in spirit, in, physically, 
mentally. And remember, Lord, those who are, who are, who are pagans in this world, who are unbelievers, who have not yet bowed the knee to the risen, exalted Christ. We pray for them. Remember Muslims as they continue to, uh, to seek God through Ramadan. We pray, Lord, that they will find you, that they will find Jesus, the risen Christ. As they seek Allah, they will find Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray for Muslims everywhere, that they will reach the point, the place, this Ramadan, as that as Ramadan comes to an end, to bow the knee to the risen, exalted Christ. And so, Lord, we pray for them and so many others. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for all those, Lord, who are without God and without hope in this world. May they find Christ, we pray. May they find hope in Jesus today. Lord, we pray for this. We pray for ourselves and we pray for our world. Remember the people of India and all over the world who are suffering from this coronavirus and so many other sufferings in our world. The climate problems in our world, the issues that causes famine and drought and floods and hurricanes. Lord, remember us, we pray, and so many in this world, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace. 
and is all sufficient grace today, sisters and brothers, in all that you do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, one and all.